it mean to be Irish? It means that we can march off Fifth Avenue on the 17th of March every year. Do you feel any kind of political tie with the people back home? I guess so. Yeah, we were born there, we still, uh, this is our newfound country, but we still like Ireland. I love being Irish, and I'm proud to be Irish. Never mind, there's only two kinds of people in the world. It's the ones that are Irish and the ones that wish they were. <laughs> what would you do as an American Irishman to, uh, to try and change the situation? I wouldn't do nothing. I'm happy that they're all over there, and I wish they'd stop coming over here because uh, I don't like them. <laughs> I wouldn't do nothing to change it. I have no feelings for it. Sir, would you like to say anything about Ireland? Well, about Ireland, well, I'm sorry they're having all that trouble over there. I hope they can solve it somehow. But I read something lately that maybe uh, behind this uh, North Irish, Irish movement there could be the, the, the communist influence. I read about that. I don't know whether it's true or not. Wait, wait, can I understand this correctly? Do you think it's the communist influence that's causing the problem in Northern Ireland? Well, I just uh, know what I read in this, uh, in this article. And they say that uh, they're trying to make North Ireland a Cuba in the British Isles. How about that? How can you be Catholic and a communist at the same time? The IRA are soldiers. They're fighting for their Irish people. Whether they carry the fight in Ireland, America, South America, Africa, or any place, it means nothing to us. We want England's ass kicked out of Ireland. And don't call us communists. We are not. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, that's James Conley, Patrick Pierce, Sean McDermott, who were shot in the ambush Easter Monday. 1916 in Dublin City. Could you compare, compare that to Bloody Sunday? No. Bloody Sunday was a different Sunday. That was a ball game in Dublin, Ireland, Bloody Sunday. But this was the uprising in Dublin when the men fought for the 32 county government, the men of 1916, and they were led by James Conley. We are marching today for one reason, to keep alive our St. Patrick tradition. There was a wee lad, uh, Jim Kennedy, and he was shot right between the eyes with a rubber bullet and he was in hospital. He was just walking home and he opened up on him, hit him right between the eyes, the old air. He was in hospital and now he's out of it. He's all right. He may have lost his eyesight over it. They're too dangerous. There's supposed to be a wee bit of metal inside them. Thank you, Lord. 
mercy to your servant Francis, who is dead, that he may not commit to suffer the wrong he may have done. How was he shot? By a robot in the hand. When they gave him a concussion, did it kill him immediately? I think, oh no, I think so. How old is he? Oh, I have And it was a big gun battle uh, up there yesterday. The soldier shot a woman dead. The soldier shot a woman dead. Now, and it's, now a woman in the street. A woman just walking by, and they just have to open up indiscriminately and kill her for nothing. The woman never. She had ten children. For ten children to be attacked. They were leaving the estate at the time, and, they and the the area had left. All called all their. They're, they're all their units back in, back in. Said it was all off, and the soldiers were leaving, and they turned around and shot the woman. Shot the woman. The IRA weren't shooting at all. It was all quiet, and they had to open up before they left. It was, there was no activity going on in the area when the soldiers were all leaving. All active service units were pulled out pulled of that area, up in the top of the estate, and they opened up on that woman, and got her twice to the head, I think it was. But the, I, I, I tell you what, to see the fellas in this area, they're more and brave. They're, more, they're actually more and brave. any kid in Belfast now who has anything you know more important to talk about than what the soldiers are doing or what you know about the a riot or something like that there I mean it, it's true you know all ch all the children are interested in it you know whether they agree with it or disagree with what's happening and you know I don't think there's any question at all of them being paid or forced to go out I mean I know for a fact myself that a whole lot of the parents just won't, you know, they don't want their, their children. I mean, you know, we kids going out to fight a big soldier. And I mean, they'll do it, you know. You've seen nine-year-old children running out and my heart's nearly stopped seeing them going and throwing petrol bombs or something at a big Saracen car. I mean, what, what hope have they got against it? They're not doing it because they're paid. They're doing it because they're, they're frustrated. They've seen what has happened happen to their, their their parents and their, their brothers and all and they have to do something against it. And that's the only way. I mean even kids even kids are fighting out in the streets so they are for what for what they want, for what they believe. and 18 young lads whipping cars with machine guns on top in Herbert Street and kids standing up to them with petrol bombs and stones. This has been said so often but it really you can have nothing but admiration. When, when I saw them kids taking their lives in their hands, all to keep them back, to keep this this part of the district safe, was I had already got into old Ardoin. But they, these youngsters really their lives were in the balance. And they, what did they think of? All they thought of was keeping the, house, the houses and the, the kids in the houses and the families in the houses safe. Yeah, I mean, can you honestly withdraw your support for people like that, that are willing enough to lie down and die? Everybody loves life and loves it very dearly. And nobody wants to, to die and, and be out of it. 
and they, that's what these kids were doing. They were standing up, facing death. Because I don't know if you've ever seen a whip with a machine gun on top, but it's the most terrifying sight. I'll never forget it. Just, it was going round, and as it was going round, it was shooting and shooting away, and it terrified the life out of me. At this time, we were around here making petrol bombs. Oh, we were when we saw it coming into Herbert Street. I was making petrol bombs that, that time too, and I didn't know her at this particular time. Mm. It's only this past year or so that I've got to know Rose. But, uh, funny, I'm not a fighter. But I remember running with another one with a bath of petrol bombs out of the way of the, of the, arm, of the police coming up the street. And, uh, Save was, your ammunition. Get your petrol your bombs out of the way. Honestly, I mean, petrol well, bombs. We weren't even thinking getting ourselves out of the way. Get the ammunition out of the way <laughs> so they wouldn't see it. Uh, the morning of internment, uh, the people went out and put up barricades and defended their own area. You know, it was it was brilliant. It was really great. The atmosphere was terrific. You know, the people were were interned. When it, when this happened before, you know, years before, uh, people sort of gave up. But not this time. You know, they went out and they built their own barricades. I mean, in our state, Anderson's town, uh, you know, all the young fellows went out. A few girls. Even went out, we built barricades, and uh, you know, there was shooting going on all through the estates and everything, and all that night, all over the city. And uh, up at Lenadoon, which is just a continuation of Anderson's town, uh, a young boy, Desmond Healy, was shot dead. He was only 14, I think. And um, whenever the soldiers shot him dead, the crowd all ran back, and the soldiers raced in and lifted this young wee boy's body and held it up by two arms from a Saracen and waved it at the people to show them what they'd done. Well, I don't care what anybody says, but people who have that sort of mentality, they're inhuman and they're savages, and there's, there's something that has just got to be dealt with. Fighting and burning is continuing in the north tonight after a day of violence started by the announcement that internment had been introduced. A woman was found shot dead in the Ardoin area a short while ago, bringing to six the number of civilians killed. The army says nine men were injured by gunshot wounds today. A soldier died this morning after being shot late last night. I have taken this serious step solely for the protection of life and the security of property. At all times, I have consistently emphasized that it was not a step towards which I would be moved by any political clamor. Equally, I cannot now allow the prospect of any misrepresentation to deflect me from my duty to act. This is not action taken against any responsible and law-abiding section of the community, nor is it in any way punitive or indiscriminate. Its benefits should be felt, not least in those places where violent men have exercised a certain sway by threat and intimidation over decent and responsible men and women. The main target of the present operation is the Irish Republican Army. It's half one in the morning that the soldiers came and um, they took the whole family that night. They raided the house, they were in the house for four hours and uh, they, they uh, took him up in the stars and they didn't beat him in the stars and they just Whenever they got to Hollywood barracks that they did beat them, whenever I found out, it was just, you, you couldn't believe, nobody could realise the, the hardship, the, not really much hardship, but it's just, um, um, you can't explain it the way you do feel. Like, I never really realised the trouble until he was lifted. I used to just go about my own business, never minded anyone. But whenever it's, you realise what people have gone through whenever it comes to your own door. You never realise it until then. I know I never anyway. Now, the Special Powers Act is a notorious piece of legislation for which uh, Dr. Vorster, the uh, Prime Minister of South Africa, said he would swap every piece of this legislation for just one clause of the Special Powers Act. Now, the Special Powers Act allows for torturing. This is quite openly stated in it that it allows for torturing, for the ob obtaining of information by any means from a prisoner. It also bans the uh, inquiry into a death of a prisoner who has died in police cells. So if someone dies while in police custody, 
There's no more heard about it. There, no one wants to ask any questions at all. That is the police's privilege, you know, to have this um, behind them. Now, this uh, is the thing which is, you know, it just allows for anything at all, anything, absolutely anything. It's covered under the banning of demonstrations, of parades, of marches, of pickets. It's covered uh, under internment, it's internment itself. Uh, newspapers, as Carl says, it's, it's just every possible thing. When the army stop you at a roadblock, it's a special powers act. When they stop you in the street, it's a special powers act. When they shoot you dead, it's a special powers act. She gets the other half hour, you see, one brother's married, the other's not. So it just takes your whole evening go up, coming up here, you know, so I have to wait on the rest of the people to get them all home. Are, are both Frankie and Jared in long cash? Yes, both of them are long cash. And her other brother is 17 years of age, he's in Crumlin Road. So I think we have paid a dear price for the freedom. There's too much has been gained, I honestly think, for the let drop off now, and I think they should continue with their fight till every last man out along cash and every political prisoner is released. Are you, how did you feel when you went down to Long Cash today? I felt terrible knowing that he was in there for nothing, for doing nothing. Different if he was charged with something, but he's in for nothing. How do you feel it's, I mean, can it, this go on? Well, I wouldn't make it to go on. I wouldn't make it to go on. I'd like peace. How do you think you're going to get it? I don't know. We're only praying that God will turn something up, that everything will turn out all right, you know, and that the men and boys will all get home together to see their families. So that... And I love old Ireland still. 
Mr. Dempsey. Uh, listen, I'm ringing up for Mrs. McLennigan here. Uh, our son, Sean, is, get, is supposed to be getting out tomorrow for 10 hours to get married. And uh, she wants to know, um, there was something on the TV there about the, the times being doubled. You know, for a man out for three days, he'll be allowed out for six days and things like this. And she wants to know, does that apply to her son? For 10 hours? Well, no, well, she, this is just something she was checking up on. Like, you're, you're better sure. It hasn't been released. Rose. Right. Yes, excuse me, also, this is the Ardoin Relief Centre. And um, we want, we're trying to find out how many men from the Ardoin area have been released, please. <laughs> ten hours. Ten hours, just, he's still expecting back after ten hours. <laughs> Said it's out to one o'clock in the hour. Should have gone to one ticket away this Wednesday. Should have gone to. Should have gone to one ticket away this Wednesday. We sang you very sleepy. Go out with my bed, Lynn. No. Why, why are you banging the bin lids? Well, uh, when our boys used to be arrested when they were coming into a raid, we had to give the warning that they were coming into a raid. We rattled the ledger then. <laughs> and, and why you do it for a wedding? Well, it's just a, a the Tristan, you know, because of, of the tr of their troubles. He was traditional. Traditional. held in Ulster generally have passed off peacefully. One was at Carrick Fergus where 2,000 people attended a rally of the Apprentice Boys and heard a speech by Mr. Craig, the leader of the Vanguard movement. Mr. Craig called the British government's latest initiative ridiculous and said that loyalists would oppose it wholeheartedly. I see. In Belfast, Mr. Whitelaw, the new minister for Northern Ireland, toured police stations. All right. At Castle Ray, he met Chief Inspector William McMaster, second from the right, who was shot in the back last October. In all, Mr. Whitelaw went to six police stations in Belfast. He spoke to officers about their reaction to direct rule and the Westminster initiatives. He was given coffee and biscuits. Mrs. Whitelaw visited the widows of policemen killed in Belfast. I like the lad, Mr. Heath, no. And Mr. Whitlow, that if there's another war, we'll never 
never sent our soldiers out, our men out from Northern Ireland, but it was Northern Ireland that won the war. And I hope he's doing the right thing. Why not let our prisoners out when they have the IRA murderers out? We're fighting yes. every day, British, and we're getting we're put down. Yes. Right, left, and centre. And we're the ones that flies the Union Jacks, not the Republicans. The murderers can get out of there and get out of Long Cash and get out of everywhere. We have political prisoners in there that done very, very little. In fact, done nothing compared to the murder that was done. And our men's in there doing seven years late and never had no evidence against them. So they, they uh, paid you to bomb, murder and wreck. They have got everything that Mr. Fagander said, violent does pay. So now we're not going to have no violence, but we're going to protest and we get our political prisoners out. But it's all one-sided. Mr. Mr. White Law's appeasing the Catholics and appeasing the IRA. Well, he'll have to appease the loyalists of Ulster, for we'll never surrender. No surrender. And as I say, if they're so fond of Dublin and so fond of the Free State, why don't they go back and stay there and live in the piggery? For that's all it is. That's right. It's only a piggery. And let them, why not go home and stay there and live in their £3.7 allowance for a man and a woman? They'll not get that here. Because they've got the Queen's money here. They want the half crown here. They want the crown, but they don't want the half crown. And as I say, they can't do enough to them. All Catholics? Well, the, Catholic, the IRA and most of the Catholics is causing the trouble. Now, I am not against people for their religion. I believe in allowing everyone to follow their own religion, so long as they allow everyone else Freedom to live, that is all we want. So we want Mr. Whitelaw to show that he is not giving a hand with a big long arm on it to the IRA or any illegal organisation. We do not represent any illegal organisation. We only want justice for the Protestants as well as the Roman Catholics. We know there are Roman Catholics who have been oppressed and who are oppressed today, but we are not oppressed in the Roman Catholics, and we do not want to see them oppressed. We want freedom for everybody in Ulster, and we want this to remain Ulster. But, uh, there can be no successful armed uprising against the British Army or the British authority. And that is something that... Uh, even apart from it, would be unthinkable to us as constitutionalists. We wouldn't even think about it. Even if we did, it couldn't be successful. If you want this country burned from end to end and wrecked, then you would do one thing. If you want to see your wives and your family and your children and your children's children and still have a stake in a country that you love, you've got to use your head. And that's what they leaders that are associated with me are doing at this present time. And let not the British government, and could I say this on this, but let the British government think, are we going to lie down? Are we going to lie down? And we're not going to do what they think we're going to do, and which some of them would like us to do, so as to batter us into the ground. If, say, the Protestant community were to attack the British army, and I think there's a strong possibility that this could happen, I believe that the British Army would shoot back at them just as quickly as they would shoot Catholics. Uh, I believe that if the Protestant community were to to rise up against uh, the British Army, if they were to stage rent and rate strikes, that no, I have no doubt in the wide world that the British government would possibly start interning Protestants. And I think that there would be a massive resentment then from the Protestant community and that they would be loud in their demand to have the British Army withdrawn and British uh, influence in Ireland uh, stopped. And you would then get a situation where you have a Catholic community saying one thing and a Protestant community saying uh, the same thing. And at that stage, I think that we could possibly turn around and say, look, uh, let's get round the table because our interests are the same. We both want the British to get out of Ireland. Uh, every time there is a, a um, if you like, a, a big uh, confrontation between the uh, British troops and the what we term the nationalists in the six counties, that is the people who are, are mostly Catholic and who, um, who and in, in the main are, see their future uh, as being 
uh, better off in a 32 county republic. Uh, when we have been working with these people, we have always tried to, to get them to work uh, in conjunction with the Protestants, and we have more or less uh, convinced them that until such time as they make some overtures to the Protestants and work side by side with them, not on a sectarian basis, but on a class basis, that this is essential, that is, this is the essential prerequisite for any advancement, either in their social positions uh, in the six counties or in, in, in any advancement towards the establishment of a workers' republic. Glory, glory to the Zion Glory, glory to the Zion Glory to the memory of the men who fought and died No surrender is the war cry of the yard time brigade What's, what, what's happening up there? There's a bomb! There's a bomb! There's a bomb! What do you think of that? Oh! Ah, I like it because then we can get off school. Ah, it's red! Are you off school because of the bomb now? Yes, no, we, we were. Off. We didn't go to school. We're all for Easter. We didn't want to. We hope that gets blew up too. We hope who gets blew up? Hooray. We Hooray. don't Hooray. like school. We don't like school. We want the army to get blown up. <laughs> <laughs> It's a prestige target. And, and that's why they keep on trying to bomb it? I would think so, yes. Prestigious in what way do you mean? Well, it's a big building and uh, it's fairly secure. And the fact that they can come along and do it, I suppose, is to mean something to them. How do you think they got in? I know how they got in. They were in that vehicle. They didn't get inside. The vehicle was... They hijacked the vehicle. Do you want me to give you the story? Yes. Well, let's move away, shall we? No. no, but the police want to do their job. At about 11 o'clock, a man with a furniture van was doing his work in one part of the city. Uh, two people, a man and a girl, came with a weapon and ordered him to drive to another part of the city. While he was in this other part of the city, um, for about an hour, they worked on the back of his vehicle and held him in the cab at gunpoint. And then they ordered him to drive to the Europa Hotel. Uh, they got as far as here, and they said, we want you to drive into the loading bay. Um, I don't think he could have, in fact, driven in. At this stage, um, he, he um, got out of the vehicle and ran away. His mate was kept. They still had his mate, and they said, if you don't do as we tell you, your mate will be shot. Why do you think they're trying to blow up the Europa? I've no idea at all, but I wish they'd stop. Do you have a lot of damage? Well, the evidence is surely here. It's enough to keep us going now. Does this happen every time? What? Everybody just mucks in and clears up. We just start again, and we don't stop. Now I'm going to start. Why do you think they're trying to blow up the Europa? Couldn't tell. You have no idea. It's happened four times before? Yes. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So you're coming to expect it? It's just natural. It's going to come. It's going to come. <laughs> well, we'll have to live with it, but I would like to know what the sense of it all is, you know. When two or three fellas, guys in a bar for a drink, what they're trying to accomplish by doing things like this. What do you think they are? Can you? Well, I don't know what they would make of these sort of people, you know, for between you and I. Uh, the way I was brought up. I wouldn't even kill a, a, a pigeon in the road while I was driving the car along the street. How, how were you brought up? Oh, I was brought up a Protestant, but easy going, mixed with everyone, having the enemy in the world as far as, I'm, as far as I know. And I was sincerely loved to see the day that everybody could uh, live up the ideals which I was brought up to. 
All I'm, all I am, is an ordinary person trying to do a day's work every day. Come out, out on a Saturday afternoon for a few drinks. Oh, incidentally, we were going to watch the Grand National, and I was deprived of that by this escapade. And what it's going to accomplish, I do not know. But it will do one thing: it's going to harden the ordinary people to make sure that they don't win. For if there's a saviour in heaven, he makes sure they don't win. If you blow up these buildings and all, you get the money. The British government has to pay the money out in compensation. If we keep on going, the British government will be out of money in a few years' time. So they'll have to do something about it. So you support the bombing camp? Yes. yes. Every campaign that there is, as long as we get the British out of Ireland, on a free Ireland, where we can, Protestant and Catholic can walk the streets together. Because these are the ones that always start all the trouble, the British, British armor. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just the day was dawn when they took the man away, not knowing what was his crime. And you what he was guilty of, not one of them could say, but they'd think of something in time. He says goodbye and remember that we shall overcome. Free the people, let them have their say. Free the people, let them see the light of day. So From Belfast, Keith Hatfield sends this report. It was the death of Mrs. Crawford, shot in the crossfire between gunmen and troops in Anderson's town last Thursday, that persuaded many women to speak out against IRA violence. Most of Mrs. Crawford's ten children and several hundred neighbours followed her coffin to Milltown Cemetery. <laughs> Soldiers stood in silence outside their post near the cemetery. After the burial, about 200 Anderson's Town women went to the peace meeting at a nearby school. But the meeting inside the school hall broke up almost before it got started. The organizers, who were calling for a truce and an end to violence and intimidation, were shouted down by supporters of the IRA provisions before they even took to the platform. I think, if I might say so, that the key to this whole situation is the women in these areas. Mm -hmm. They're magnificent, what they've put up with. They've had their men and their sons torn from them. Uh, they've got them locked up without trial and locked up in such a bestially stupid way that you have a, a, a woman with a husband kept in one camp and her two sons kept in another camp, 80 miles apart. Or why they don't put the family together and make it easy for her to visit them, I don't know. But this sort of thing, these women have stood up to this. They have harboured the men on the run. They have hidden arms in their houses when they risk long sentence of imprisonment. They have hidden jelly night when they're afraid to go off and blow them sky high. I, I, I must say I have nothing but admiration for the ordinary working class Catholic mother and young girl of the areas of Belfast and Derry. They are the people who have won this fight. Without them there couldn't be a provision in my area. I suggest you keep out of the way. Um, routine search of houses and gardens. I suggest you keep out of the way.
Over. A one nine, I have a priest at my location. Things are quiet. The responsible people have stopped the stone throwing, stopped the bottling. They have it under control. They have asked that we leave the area as soon as possible, as our presence is causing a certain amount of aggravation. Over. The people keep on going the way they're going. They can't get the people of the world road down hard. I mean, you see them yourself here. But we're, we're hard to put down. You can, uh, you can beat an army, but you can't beat a people, and our people's with us now. Every man, woman, and child is with us here now against the British Army. So they've no chance of winning. They've no chance of beating us here at all. Do you support the Provisional Army in this area? Well, like, in a sense, yes. I mean to say, if we didn't support them, who would? Tell us what the barricade is for. It's to stop uh, British intelligence agents, British intelligence agents, RUC special branch coming into the area, you know, getting plans of the area, security, the main security of the area, keeping people who we don't want out, you know, mainly RUC special branch and British intelligence. The British Army ever try and come through here? The, no, not during the day. At night time they make, you know, odd trips into the area. Uh, no, never during the day. What kind of gun is that you've got? Thompson submachine gun. Have you used it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I have, yeah. What did you feel like when you did? Um, I didn't have any deep feelings, you know. If, you, if you've lived in Derry, you've, you've seen the British Army shoot down people you know well, so when you shoot at them, you know, there's no real, you don't feel guilty or bad about it. At least I don't. Hey, take your weapons. feel about shooting the British soldiers? Well, it's, it's more or less you're fighting for something that you believe in, you know, something you're prepared to die for, like, you know, we are prepared to fight for this, no matter what army or occupying forces gets in our way, you know. But uh, they'll give up for us before we give. They'll be out of Ireland. This country will be free. There's no mistake about that. And we're determined to really fight for it and make sure that it will be free. And the British will leave this, they'll leave this part of the world for good and they'll not come back again. Yeah. 